You are tuned into you the Habbo radio station everyone loves. J A A A B A F M. Do do Fisher with the Bahin Zolich game. Where shall I go? An appropriate song for our guest on online from Sydney, Gil Ben Moshe, a filmmaker. G'day, Ben. How are you? Good morning to you, Gary. How are you? You Fantastic. said to me on the phone just before it's one of your favourite songs and an appropriate song for the film you've just put together called Anno 2020. Tell us about Anno 2020. Well, that's a very, very good question. It's it's not your average movie, let's just say that. So it's, it's basically um, set around the world during 2020. And it's about different people's struggles during that tumultuous year. You know, we all went through so much. So we filmed in five different countries. One of them Israel, 17 different cities. One of them Tel Aviv. And it's in four different languages, actually. One of them Hebrew. So the movie really is an adaptation of the published novel with the same name that James Morgan, who actually wrote and directed the movie. Um, the story itself, I guess, can be best described as a, it's a multicultural kaleidoscope of interconnected characters which are seeking redemption, forgiveness and peace during the chaotic year, which was 2020. What has that got to do with Holocaust debunking? Right. Now... That's, that's exactly a very good point. Now, as we all know, uh, anti-Semitism is, is on the rise worldwide again, and it just needs to be addressed. So my filmmaking partner, James Morkin, who's actually a published uh, author as well, he published a book um, debunking Holocaust denial. So it, it, it's very close to my heart. It's very close to his heart as well, because during his study and research for the book, he interviewed a lot of Holocaust survivors and he heard their stories and, you know, I mean, the atrocities which actually happened um, during the Holocaust, I felt as though it's something that we just can't forget, you know? I mean, it was such an inhumane event and it needs to be reminded, you know? It was one of the worst displays of hatred, discrimination, and genocide that we've ever seen against Jews. And let's face it, Gary, we've been through quite a lot. Um, so I've, I, it was very important for me as a Jew to to bring that up in this movie because I just feel as though anti-Semitism isn't going anywhere. It, it's on the rise again. Um, you hear about it on the news a lot. And even just last week, um, I read an article about a Jewish man who goes who attends university in Melbourne and he actually conceals his Jewishness because he's fearing for his life. He's scared. Um, he knows what all of the other students at that university say about Jews and how they feel about Jews and how they discriminate. And, I mean, Gary, why should anyone be living like that? Why should anyone not be who they are and be proud of who, they're, who they are and, and about their heritage and their Jewishness? I mean, I, I really felt for him. And... That's why it was really important for me to include this in this movie. It must have been difficult during 2020 to make a film around the world with all the logistical imposts because of COVID-19. How, how did you cope with that? Yeah, look, put it this way. <clears throat> it wasn't easy, but when, when you, we are faced with such uh, an adversity, such as the lockdown... Um, for me personally, um, we had to think outside of the box, you know, and, and we all had to really think outside of the box because no one wanted to just sit in a house and do nothing. And actually, two weeks before we actually went into lockdown, James and I were actually meant to be shooting another movie and that got cancelled because of, of COVID. So... James is very, very creative. He's a brilliant writer. So he came up with this idea. What if we were to shoot something around the world and we just use cutting edge technology? You know, I mean, let's just think about how all of us were living during 2020. I mean, it changed everything. And how were we actually communicating with each other? It was basically through Zoom and Facebook. 
FaceTime and, and video conferencing. So, so we used a lot of revolutionary filmmaking techniques um, to get this film made, um, which, which was brilliant, and it really worked. Now, we used between eight to ten film crews around the world. So we shot in Tel Aviv, we shot in China, we shot in Italy, we shot all over the US, and we shot all around Australia. So we used different film crews. We casted, and I believe is one of the most talented um, casts I've ever had the pleasure to work with. And and that's what you need to do. You need to think outside of the box. So it's almost like a, a, a 70 to 30% split where we watched every single scene through Zoom and our director, James Morgan, and this was his, debut movie as director he did an incredible job on this movie he just did not want to make your typical movie so, so did you gave, go did you go to those 17 different cities or, or did no you? we we didn't but what we did do is that we we watched every single scene through zoom and that's basically how our director james directed all of our actors um, and all of our production design was all done through Zoom. So we would watch every single scene, set them up, watch all the takes, and then we would direct them that way because obviously we, we could only do it remotely. There was no way in the world that we could physically be there. We weren't allowed to. Um, and, and I think this is a, a revolutionary way of making films. And we have had so many articles written about our movie worldwide um asking us how did we actually do this um now obviously around australia it was a bit easier um but obviously we couldn't go overseas so it was it was kind of remarkable in that sense the way we achieved this we, we still actually can't believe that we actually did this and we achieved it you know it's, it's something that we're extremely proud of and and i guess incorporating all of the jewish aspects where we do tackle anti-semitism and we debunk Holocaust denials. I'm, as a Jew and a very proud Jew, I'm extremely proud of this, Gary. So you stayed home and you had film crews in all those city, cities overseas and you aggregated the film in Sydney, I guess. Yes, that, that's exactly right. Um, yeah, so it was mainly all of the, uh, the, the Sydney and Australia shoots that we, uh, we attended. Um, but yeah, the overseas ones we couldn't. So um, yeah, we um, we found incredible filmmakers. I, I think one of the best um, DOPs cameramen that I worked with was actually in Tel Aviv, um, Nati Shoko from Shoko Productions. He shot us some incredible footage um, in Tel Aviv and Israel, and we used a brilliant Israeli actress, Leital Luzon, who I'm telling you. Right here, right now, Gary, she is going to be a superstar. Mm. She stole the show in this, in this movie. She's absolutely brilliant. One of the loveliest actresses you'll ever meet in your life. And um, I think we're going to be extremely proud of her performance as Jews. When, when is the film coming out and where is it coming out? Okay, so um, we, we have a plan. So at the moment, we're still in the post-production process we've just completed our second edit um our main goal at the moment is to enter this movie into major film festivals around the world um i believe that this movie is designed for film festivals and and i really think uh, even though we've actually spoken to a couple of distributors who are interested in this movie but i do believe that it's going to be picked up um by a major either network um, and to and to get a theatrical release, and then eventually um, get it onto a, a streaming service. What are you That's aiming it. for? Um, look, this movie it, it contains um, <clears throat> four different plots, so it's not your average movie. So we can't just go for the typical Hollywood, uh, you know, one and a half hours over and done with. You know, you have your antagonist you have your protagonist he has a, a goal he interferes with the goal it's not like that it's actually telling four separate stories it, it's a vignette so it's um 
it's got multiple plots which are happening simultaneously. Um, and that's what makes this unique. So each of those plots, we could easily have made a movie on their own. So yeah, that's why um, we, we, we can't get this down to an hour and a half. So I think realistically two hours and 20 minutes to two hours, two and a half hours, I would say would be where we would be at with this movie. Cause it really is epic. Think about it, Gary, we've shot it around the world, you know, in five different countries. So there is so much to explore in this movie. Um, so yeah, it'd be very hard to cut it down any further than that. Sounds like one heck of a docudrama. Yeah, it, it does sound like that. Um, but I, I really feel as though this is going to be something that people will resonate with because we all have experienced lockdowns. You know, it was such a draconian lockdown for many, um, especially in Melbourne, where you're calling from, and you experienced it the worst in Australia. That yeah, was um, nothing. And, and, <laughs> we and, yeah, we survived. Yeah, was nothing, just an average day for you. And, you know, with the world's dystopia, I mean... We, we honestly believe that this could all, almost be an, an official documentation and a record to what actually happened in 2020. You know, when in schools in years to come ago, what actually happened in 2020? I mean, if they were to watch this movie, Anno 2020, that would tell you exactly the way people were thinking. And, and, and the good thing is, Gary, we showed all sides. And we showed what everyone was thinking, you know. Um, there was the, the presidential campaign and, and lots of other things where people were thinking this is all just a hoax. Um, but it, it, it's a lot more than that. And may I just say one more thing, if I may, Gary, um, just on James Morkin, our writer-director. Now, for, for one of the major scenes in the movie where we are debunking Holocaust denials, he actually played that role because it was a very hard role to fill. Not many actors wanted to play that role. So James being a, uh, an experienced actor himself, you know, he's worked on sets with, um, with Russell Crowe's and worked with Peter Jackson and Lord of the Rings, so on and so forth, because he's actually New Zealand born um, and then came to Australia in the late 90s. But um, yeah, it, it, it's one of those things where we have become such good friends. It's our first, fourth movie that we've worked on together and the build-up was at least six to nine months for that scene and it was incredible because I play Levi, um, who's a Jewish man in the cemetery, respecting my dad's yard site, lighting a candle for him and I'm overhearing a conversation with James who plays Byron, who's on a wheelchair. Now, this is the thing. James wants substance. As a director, he's he screamed for substance. And we thought, what would be better than not just having an anti-Semite in the movie, but um, a disabled anti-Semite? Would people feel for him because he's on a wheelchair, yeah. regardless of what he's I, saying? I've, I've, you watched know what it that, I've watched that clip. Yes, yeah. it was um, confronting. It, it is. And, and I think it needed to be because, you know what? I, I, I grew up in... Um, in Willamalu, which is a, a suburb um, in the east suburbs, close to the, the CBD, and we were the only Jewish family in Willamalu, and and we we experienced a lot, you know, we experienced so much anti-Semitism, and and that was all included in this because James wanted us to speak about our real life experiences in our movies because he felt as though that the, we all have trauma. Gary, we have all experienced things in our lives. And as Jews, we have an extra layer of trauma with experiencing anti-Semitism. And you know, I'm, I'm 49 years old and even today, I still experience it and I hear it. And I, I just feel as though it's something that needs to be addressed. And it's not only something that Jews need to talk about. Um, everyone needs to talk about this because this is not normal. I mean, you can't just say that, oh, well, you know, anti-Semitism, that's okay. You want to make a comment against Jews? Go for it. It's not acceptable anymore. It, and the, and the this thing is, is it's, I made a stand. it's not normal, but it's the norm. That's exactly right. And, and this is the point. Um, I, I don't like it. I, I, I've had enough. Um, I've, I, I can't handle hearing it and listening to it anymore. I mean, you look at social media. 
um, the, every single day there is something which is posted which is probably incorrect I'd say most of the time it's, it's, it's propaganda but it's such hatred towards Jews you know there are these hate speeches and, and a tirade of, of violent negative speeches against Jews and I'm sorry but I, I just won't tolerate it anymore I, I can't and I won't you know I'm from a very proud Jewish family my father fought in the Six Day War in 67 in Israel. My mother was also um, an Israeli and they came to Australia in 1970 and we went to a Jewish school. We were brought up kosher at home. We celebrated all of the festivals. You know, this is important to us, you know. Unfortunately, both of them are no, no longer with us, but I mean, I feel that they're still with us. And if there's one thing my parents saw me, and this is the plot, title in my plot in the movie is called my father's legacy and my father's legacy was be proud of who you are be proud of your jewishness be proud of israel and and that is something which is in my heart and in both of my brother's hearts and i will never ever stop being jewish because someone told me to stop being jewish max, it's never going to happen gary good on you max has a question Bokatov Gil, wonderful Bokatov to have. Bokatov Dima, how are you? I'm very well, Baruch Hashem. W welcome to our show. It's, uh, Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you on. I've got one uh, question uh, for you. Please. Are you related, to, uh, are you Mishpacha to Danny Ben Moshe, the Melbourne uh, film producer who's done a lot of movies out here? And at one stage he was uh, the uh, president of the Anti-Defamation Commission. Have you come across him, or is he part of your mishpocha? Well, firstly, pleasure to meet you. Secondly, um, thank you for having me on your show. And thirdly, to answer your question, no, I actually am not related to him. And funny enough, when people were researching me and my name, his name came up, and, and I'd never heard of him. But it's funny, I did get in touch with him. And he said, no, we're of no relation. Right. I, I just happen to be a Jewish filmmaker with the same surname as you. Mm. He did so the out how's that for a small world? Yeah, um, he did the Outback Rabbis. I don't know if you caught that film a few years ago. It was on SBS. Great, great movie. Try and have a look at that the one. The Outback Rabbis? No, I did not. <laughs> and he I did, yeah. Watch the that. other one you should look at is he did a documentary, went to Channel 2, about uh, Jewish life during COVID leading up to Yom Kippur, and it showed all what people are doing with the restrictions. That I saw. Yeah, that was great. Yes, that I saw. Yeah. Um, someone who I went to school with and grew up with, his name is Dov Farkash, and he's a cousin, um, I think. Think it's um, yes. He appeared in uh, the movie. Yes, correct. That's right. Shimon Farkas's so that's, son. That's right, Chaim. That's right. Yes. So I saw him and I got in touch with him and, and I said, "Wow, this is amazing!" And he's a brilliant cousin mm. too. And I remember him from the days in Sydney. Um, I think he used to be at the um, Central Synagogue where he used to um, daven and, and sing with his father Shimon as well, right? Mm, correct. Yeah, correct. correct. Yeah, yeah. A Thanks. lovely family. Thanks, Gil. Well, no, on, that, you, on that note, Gil, we'll thank you for your time. You should know that our program is dedicated to the six million. We always give a sign-off at the end of our two hours in dedication to the six million who cannot tell their story today. I'm so happy to hear that. Thank you so much. It was an absolute pleasure to be on your show. Thank you for listening to my story. And um, we will never, ever forget the Shoah. It'll always be in our hearts. Yes. That's all I have to say about that. Hang on the line. I'll talk to you off here. Okay. Thanks, Thanks very much, Thanks very Gary. much, Gil ben Mosher, who Pleasure. Thank you so much. Filmed Anno 2020, soon to be released.